We're joined by San Diego State Uni grad Yanni Vetzel, the latest Southeast Melbourne Phoenix recruit. Where do we find you at the moment in the world, mate? Hey, Sam. Thanks for having me. Um, right now, I'm based in Auckland, New Zealand, I'm living with my parents. Um, normal life back here in uh, New Zealand, so pretty stoked and uh, pretty blessed to be in a situation where, you know, I can go outside and go to training and have a normal routine and um, you know, do all of the normal things that we were doing before this uh, pandemic hit. So, um, yeah, just living with the parents at the moment and training away. Yeah, we're pretty uh, pretty jealous over here. So you finished your uh, college season, obviously, when all this pandemic took over uh, at San Diego State. When did you move back to New Zealand? Um, so I spent another two, three months after the season um, got cancelled. Uh, we have just finished our conference tournament. And we were training, getting ready for um, March Madness. And then, you know, the world kind of blew up. And um, it was a heartbreaking into my career as a, as a college student, um, college athlete. But, you know, you got to move forward and adapt to whatever life throws at you. Um, so I spent two months finishing off my studies. And, um, you know, I was hoping that a few NBA teams would get some guys in for workouts. But that didn't, you know, follow suit. So um, after a couple of months of spending some time in San Diego, I headed back to New Zealand. Um, you know, a place, a safe haven where um, life was pretty normal after they had their little four-week lockdown here and um, came back and decided to get in a routine and start working out back home. And before we go much further, you've got a bit of a nickname, I've been told, over in uh, the US, Wetzel the Pretzel. Uh -oh. <laughs> <Is that something laughs> yeah, I don't know how that came about, but uh, a couple student in the student section, a couple of fans um, wrote some signs and they made a whole logo with the Wetzel pretzel and it was like a picture of me holding a pretzel on my back and um, it kind of took off on that from there. I mean, it was all over Twitter and um, yeah, a lot of the student section got behind it and um, it's kind of a name I made for myself, I guess. <laughs> is it true that Wetzel's pretzels is actually like a, a mall kind of store over there in the US? Yeah, yeah, it's massive. It's like at all the shopping malls, theme parks and I was hoping to get a little endorsement deal once I was done, but uh, COVID kind of swerved that one out of the way. That's right. It's uh, good to get you all clear. We can call you uh, call you the pretzel. So, <laughs> how have you been hoping to join the NBL? Obviously, you're a New Zealander, so it's something that you might have had uh, an eye out for for a while. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I started playing basketball pretty late. Um, I was a tennis player until my last year yeah. of high school. And then um, basketball came in into the limelight and um, I started training. At, I, was, I only live about five minutes from the Breakers facility. So um, my last year of high school, I actually trained a lot with those guys and got immersed in that sort of culture. And, um, you know, that was the year, I think that period, my last couple of years of high school, they were doing really well. I think they had won back-to-back -back championships. Um, so basketball was massive in Auckland. Um, you know, I went to a few games and obviously training with all those, um, you know, those superstars that, had such a great run there. Um, it had always been a dream of mine to play um, either back home in New Zealand or in the Australian, for one of the Australian teams in the NBL. So, um, yeah, it's had very exciting that I've um, come to this point where I have the opportunity to play, um, you know, in, in down under. Uh, when you're talking about the whole world, it's nice to be home, um, close to a place that, you know, I consider very dear to my heart. Yeah, no, we're excited to have you on board. Uh, you were pretty hot property in the NBL market a lot of people expected obviously as you said you live so close to the breakers a lot of people expected you to sign there what was the call or what was the uh you know the decision to sign with the phoenix what was behind that yeah yeah I think um you know there was a number of th factors that came into play um a lot of it was timing um opportunity I think there is a bit more interest from um you guys at southeast Melbourne and I just felt like the fit was there um, the style of play, the way you fit Dane and, you know, you run the four fives, your athletic mobile bigs. Um, and I felt like I fit in that slot pretty well. Um, you know, and I felt like the opportunity and the interest was there. And from day one, um, as soon as my college season finished, I've talked to um, Coach Simon and Tommy and uh, Judd, Judd Flavel, obviously, who was previous with the Breakers. And, um, yeah, we started a relationship from very early on. And before uh, those... Coaches and staff did approach you from the Phoenix. How much did you know about the club, given they're pretty new? Yeah, not a whole lot. Um, you know, obviously following guys like Mitch Creek a little bit who have been in and out of the NBA. Um, and I knew he had played, he played for you guys in the inaugural season and that. 
Um, but not a whole lot because you guys are obviously very fresh. Um, but cool to see another an album Melbourne team from the Heartland um, join join the NBL. You know, a city which has had such a great legacy with grassroots um, basketball and that. So yeah, definitely exciting. And your discussions with Simon and Judd. What kind of role are you expecting to uh, play? What strengths are you going to bring to the team? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think a big asset that I bring um, defensively is just the mobility and. And Dane's quite a similar player in terms of the way he moves his feet and he's able to um, slide with smaller guys and, and, and he's great in ball screen coverages. Um, and then on an offensive then just try to be, you know, a big aggressive presence and then bring, um, you know, that ability to step outside and then shoot the ball and play from both inside and outside and then just try to be, um, you know, a great asset from, from both ends of the floor. And just back on your college career, as you were saying before, you didn't start basketball properly until you were about 17. Uh, had a bit of a tennis career going, I heard. Bit of a big serve on you. Um, why yeah, you, yeah, why? yeah, a little bit. I actually I had a late growth spurt, so I shot up about six or seven inches right, okay. uh, my last couple of years of high school. So I was a tennis player and I wasn't that tall. And then um, I grew to like six, eight um, the start of my high school. Last year of high school when I decided that I was playing a little bit of social basketball and I decided that, um, you know, I was loving the sport, you know, why not, let me give a shot at this. And I didn't have much exposure. Um, I started playing um, high school and then Juddy actually saw me. Um, he was the one that kind of picked me up for the junior breakers and the junior tall blacks. And um, with the space of six months, um, I kind of flourished into a decent player enough to set myself up to um, get a couple looks at division two schools. And then that's kind of the route that I went to. Um, and, you know, it was, it was a very sudden movement because I had always planned to be a tennis player and go spend four years in college on a tennis scholarship. So um, sudden change of events, but it turned out pretty well and had a good couple of years at a Division II, um, which set me up for the rest of my college career. Many, many, many talents. Uh, so you said Judd, Judd picked you up, basically, from a, a young age. Judd's yeah. Your assistant coach, that is. Can you talk us through where he, where he found you? Yeah, it's pretty full circle. Um, we actually talked the other day and he's like, man, this would be crazy if you end up signing here. Yeah. Like from the first time you started basketball and, you know, we were working out in the gym all the time and now I'd be able to coach you six years later. So, um, yeah, pretty full circle. So it's a pretty cool story. Yeah, um, cool. But I think the first time I was just playing for my local high school, Westlake Boys, and we were playing our rival, uh, Rangi Toto, at their gym. And um, he came along to watch. Um, just scout some of the younger guys for the junior academy and uh, some development spots on the breakers um, team that side uh, that year. And then I think he saw me and he called me and it was actually my birthday and it was 2014. I had played like six months of social basketball, just decided to join the high school team. He's like, man, like you're six, eight, uh, you're running around with all these guys, you're holding your own and you're kind of relying on your hustle and your intangibles and your physical tools. And I was like, yeah, I mean, that's all I kind of know right now. I haven't really developed any skill. And he's like, look, I'd love to get you along to the breakers. Um, you can join the development team. And then we can maybe chalk junior tall blacks from there. But I think you have a lot of raw potential and I'd love to work on it with you. And I was like, I was on the phone. It was on my birthday. And I was like, man, this is the coolest thing that could have happened to me. Like the best birthday present I could have asked for. So, um, yeah, it was a pretty exciting day for me. All right. Full circle. Back with Juddy. Yeah. Uh, so you played believe St. Mary's and Vanderbilt before you joined San Diego State uh, for your final year, which was the year just passed. And you had a bit of a breakout year starting all games and you guys went 30-2, and two, I believe. Can you talk us through? Yeah, 30-2 won the first 26 in a row. Straight. Yeah. Talk us through what yeah. was before, you know, rapid. An incredible run, man. But yeah, it was, it was kind of, I was waiting on it because after my first two years at St. Mary's, we then, I then transferred to Vanderbilt. Yeah. Um, I set out redshirt in my first year and then I played my redshirt junior year and um, we had a pretty tough run. Um, our, our point guard who was meant to be our guy, um, you know, a marquee player, he ended up being the fifth pick um, in the draft last year, Darius Garland. Right, okay. He got hurt four games in um, and it kind of changed the whole dynamic and style of our system and our offense because we had kind of built everything around him. And um, then when he got hurt, you know, the dynamic, whole dynamic changed and we didn't manage to really get on track again. And we lost a lot of games, a lot of games consecutively. So, um, you know, our coaches ended up getting uh, let go 
at the end of the year and I just decided that it was probably in my best interest to go to somewhere more established and, and try to have a great um, last year in college to set myself up for a professional career. And that's kind of when I decided to um, transfer and San Diego State came calling and thought that was the best fit for me. And um, kind of to flip the, the script from 2019 to 2020 was a pretty special occasion for me, um, losing 20 straight to going 26 and oh, um, <laughs> you know, was the, the biggest 180 in college basketball history, people are saying. So, um, yeah, it was pretty exciting and, and stoked to have that run and finish my college career on a high. Yeah, I'm told you were a pretty big part of it. What were or who were some of the better players that you ever had to test yourself against at, uh, at college level? Yeah, yeah. Um, at Vandy, I played some really good guys. Um, Tennessee's Admiral Schofield, Grant Williams, um, guys at Kentucky, the likes of... Um, uh, Tyler Hero, um, Ashton Hagens, Keldon Johnson, um, all NBA prospects or guys that even started to establish themselves in the NBA. Um, and the list goes on. I mean, the SEC was a very stacked that year. I think they had eight teams that made the March Madness tournament. Um, so every night was, you know, you're going to have the game of your life. Like, if you can really play well, you're going to put your name out there. So, yeah. um, now it, it was an awesome conference, a very highly competitive, and you knew every night was going to be a battle. One of your assistant coaches at San Diego State, Dave Velasquez, we spoke to recently and uh, he gave you a fair pump up, but he said you're one of the <laughs> favourites, he reckons. You've had MVPs and big names, but he reckons everyone got around wet sort of pretzel. What, uh, what do you bring that people seem to gravitate to? <laughs> Dave, yeah, that's my guy. Um, I don't, I'm not too sure. Uh, I just play hard on the floor and, you know, live by that Kiwi grit, that Kiwi mentality and, you know, diving on loose balls and just putting your body before anything else. And, and that's kind of the motto I live by. And that's how I kind of established myself as a basketball player when I first started with no skill, um, was just using all those tools and then hustle and um, just the grit. And then that's kind of what I relied on and, and continued. And as my skills started to develop, um, I never lost that side of, um, of my game. And, and that's kind of, um, one thing that I like to um, stand by and something that I pride myself in. Can we expect some uh, some dunks? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be bringing those to Melbourne. Yeah, we've, uh, we're have we a bit short on dunks last year. Plenty of threes, but we'll <laughs> hoping a couple of yeah. the pretzel. I can try to help you out there. Maybe not as many as Mitch Creek, but uh, I'll do my best. Uh, we appreciate that. He also said, this is uh, still Dave, your old assistant coach, he said you're the kind of guy that you'd... Uh, You'd want your daughter to date. How's that for a compliment? <laughs> Man, he's gassing me up too much. <laughs> you got to take everything he says with a grain of salt because uh, a whole lot of blabber comes out of his mouth. Uh, good man, Dave. Uh, just <laughs> when are you expecting to get over here and how excited are you to join the Phoenix for NBL 21? Yeah, I'm excited. As soon as I, you know, lockdown eases and um, those border restrictions ease, I'm over there and I'm pumped, super excited to get over there. I haven't played a game of basketball in, I don't know, five since March, really, since February. Um, so amped to get over there. Um, super pumped to join, you know, a club who's um, very early in their early stages of, um, of NBL history and, and trying to create something special and, and shoot for a championship from day one and uh, ready to come in and make an impact as soon as I get there. Well, Yanni Vettel, it's been a... Pleasure to speak and hopefully we'll catch up soon when uh, when you can. But we're all looking forward to having you next year. I'm sure the Phoenix fans will look forward to some uh, highlight slams and some big pretzel signs. So <laughs> Absolutely. Cheers, yeah. Sam. Thanks, Yon.